take time to be holy. Speak off with thy love. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, like him thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit, the fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitter for service aboard. Jesus' name we pray. Our Divine Father, we are grateful unto you today. We are hearing of you. We are wondering the works you are doing among us. The vision you have presented before us. We seek to understand. And we want to move with you. Divine. We want you to save souls here. We want practical Christianity. To be practiced in holiness revival movement. God, conserve the souls of your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Cause them to understand your word clearly. And let them be helped by the Lord. In this Christian journey. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm talking to you on the message, the choice is yours to make. The decision is yours to take. The choice is yours to make. The decision is yours to take. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30. Deuteronomy, chapter 30. I want to read verse 15 to verse 20. See. I have, I have said before thee this day, life and good, and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I denounce unto you this day 
that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land which that thou goest over Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life, and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. Much has been accomplished in your life by the grace of God. You can speak with the psalmist of God's great salvation in your life and his establishment which he established you in the truth in the faith, in the way, as the psalmist said in Psalm 40, Psalm 40, much has been done in verse 40, I mean in verse 1, verse 1 to verse 3. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And he had put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. That's what the psalmist said. He said, I fell into a pit. That pit was a horrible pit. More than just that, there was clay underneath the pit. I got stuck, my feet got stuck in the clay such that personal effort could not avail. There was no way I could climb up by myself. I was abandoned to die. But God, in my cry, thou hast thou heard my voice. My voice. And you brought me up out of the horrible pit. You pulled my legs, my feet from the miry clay. And when you brought me out of the pit, you put me upon a rock. A rock that will never sing. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. And you put a new song in my mouth. A song of praise. Testimony. That's true of you. You were into darkness. You are into the forest of this world. Lost. You are into the wild world. Completely walking as a wild dog. You were covered with sin and wickedness. You were under oppression. Terrible oppression. You were gone. But you cried. How did you pray? Did you have the strength to really pray if it was not the grace of God that hurt you? He heard that prayer. You muttered in a small way like a thief on the cross muttering his last strength and he didn't really know so sure he would be hard. And he was hard. And you were hard. And the Lord brought you out of that life. He brought you out of that darkness 
and placed your feet on the rock this is you you are saved this is you your name is in the book of life this is you you are delivered you rejoice over satan because you have overcome him so that's what i'm saying god has done in your life yes now you know the way of life to follow you know the way going to heaven you know the way clear the way of life you know it you didn't know before nobody told you they confused you they misdirected you you didn't know but now you have known and what is the way john chapter 14. i read from verse 1 to verse 6. john chapter 14 verse 1 to verse 6. let not your heart be troubled ye believe in god believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if we're not so I would have told you i go to prepare a place for you and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you unto myself and where i am there ye may be also and whither i go ye know and the way ye know you have known the way nobody can deceive you anymore you were a muslim before they told you that muhammad said some would save or you were an idol worshipper before they told you that this and the stones and trees and some things would say you were of you were a free thinker you thought nothing existed or you worship other things you believe in some heroes of life you were out onto occultism following the amok society telling you this and that and that you went to various type of wild society of life you didn't know your way but now you know the way hallelujah Amen. now you know how to go to heaven now you know you were groping in darkness groping here and there you were in church that didn't know jesus never taught him so but now you have known the way jesus said the way to this paradise the way to my father's house you know the way to where mansions could be everlasting mansions can be yours you know the way and jesus said in verse 6 i am the way the truth and the lie no man coming unto the father but by me and you have known jesus i say you have known jesus Amen. what a privilege many are still there in the bush many are still there in the forest many are still there in the dark world in the wild world they don't know him they don't know the way they don't know how to come out but you have left that place you are in a new place now your eyes see what a privilege you have received yes now you also know the truth that makes one free from sin the truth that make, makes a person free from satan the truth that makes a person free from the influence of the world the truth that delivers from death hell it's a blessing that now you have known the truth that will deliver you set you free that will give you eternal life Look at John chapter 17, verse 3. John verse, chapter 17, verse 3. And this is life eternal that they may know thee, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. You know Jesus Christ. You know God. And that is life eternal. You have known God you have known jesus you have known the truth that is life eternal that god has granted you first john chapter 2 verse 12 to 14 first john chapter 2 verse 12 
to verse 14. The Bible says, I write unto you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write unto you fathers because ye know him that is from the beginning. I write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you little children because ye have known the father. I have written unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abided in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Can you see, little children? Thank God you have known the father. Thank God you have known the Father. Your sins are forgiven. Little children, you just came to the faith now, but you have known God. Your sins are forgiven. I have written unto you, fathers, you have known him that is from the beginning. How, does, well, how do you know God? Is it mental knowledge? It is acquaintance to his power of righteousness that makes you righteous. Know ye not that Christ is in you except ye be reprobate? Knowing God, he is righteous. He that doeth righteousness is none of him. He that doeth righteousness knoweth God. Because God is righteousness. How? You know the day because, see, you can see light everywhere. And you walk in the light. You are walking in the light. You are walking in God. You are following his ways. You are following his commandments. That is knowing God. The Bible says, if any man says he knows God and does not keep his commandment. What is that man saying? Who is that man? The same is a liar. The same is a liar. So, how will you say you know God and you are still walking in darkness? But when you are walking in the light, you have known him. Knowing God is by faith. Don't allow your body to be forcing you. That's the devil that wants you to touch something. Touch something physical. Touch something. No. By faith we understand. That's the Bible. For by faith we understand that the world was made by the word of God. The just shall live by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Is it because thou hast seen me, Thomas, before thou hast believed? Blessed are they who have not seen, but yet have been believed that's what it is you have known him because your life has conformed to him you have thrown away sin you're following him and the spirit is a bearded witness with our spirits that we are the sons of god that is it. so we have known him again the word of god abides in us and we are strong we have victory over the devil we have overcome sin for whoever is born of God does not commit sin. We have overcome sin. We have overcome Satan. He that believed in Christ has overcome the world. We have overcome the world. So all these are privileges that you have received. You have received. Through the knowledge of truth. The knowledge of truth. As ye have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Being rooted and established in him. And being built as you are being taught, continuing therein with thanks given. You have known the truth as they are teaching you constantly. You have conformed to the truth. What a privilege. These things are great. All that remains now is for heaven. All that you are waiting for is heaven. Now it can come. Come, Lord Jesus. Even so, we say, Amen. Why? We're ready. Simon or Simeon said, Let your servant depart in peace. For my eyes have seen the salvation of the Lord. I'm now ready. Peter said, I am ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. Paul said the same thing. He's ready to be offered. The time of his departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. 
I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. Now I'm waiting for the crown. You're just waiting for the crown now. I said, You're just waiting for the crown now. And let the trumpet sound, we are going. I said, Let the trumpet sound, we are going. For we are ready, O oh Lord. That is how it is. You have changed, you have done your restitutions, you have done everything, and you're waiting for the Lord. And you who have not done it, run faster because you have known the way already. You have known the truth already. Run faster. Get these things done because we're getting ready to be going to heaven. Yes. But I want to let you know for these treasures you have obtained in Christ, the enemy is pursuing hard after you to spoil you and destroy you. Is pursuing hard after you. A story was told of a righteous man. A goodly righteous man. That was traveling somewhere. And in those days where there were no vehicles. That you would climb on your mules. Climb on your donkey. So he was going a far journey. Demons were struggling. Satan was struggling to attack him. Righteous man. And anytime it was night. And the man slept. A, a wall was built around him. A wall. Because when he slept, he prayed. He committed himself to God in prayer. He prayed, God, I'm sleeping here. Take care of me. A wall will just be built around him. So, when this enemy, well, I think it was robbers. It was robbers. I'm robbers. When they came to pick him, they saw a wall around him. They go around that wall, they didn't have a door. They would just be imagining. How did it happen? How did this man build this house so fast? That we could not get him in the night. Okay, the second day. The third day. And that's how they were checking up. Until a day he was too tired. Maybe he forgot to pray. The wall was built. But there was a hall. There was a, an opening. So when they came there. They saw him. But this time. He has become a mystical man. To do him harm, the best is to learn secret from him. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Ah, which people are these? Yes, we are evil people. We have been pursuing you all this while. We have been trying to get at you, rob you, spoil you. But one thing we noticed. Anytime we came in, we will allow you to highlight. And to sleep because we are trailing you. When we come, came to you, we saw that a wall is built around you. What's happening? What's the secret? Ah, for the Lord. The Bible, what, does the Bible, what does Satan what does Satan tell the Lord? For you have built an hedge around about him. That's God. The Lord shall give his angels church over thee. But while you have all these treasures, remember Satan is pursuing you. To spoil you. Some near their death, he spoiled them. Some, it is in the middle of their journey, he spoiled them. Some, as they were beginning the journey, he spoiled them. Therefore, beware of this. The Bible tells us in John chapter 10, verse 10. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Take note. Satan is pursuing after you to get you killed. To get you destroyed. To steal away all these treasures of eternal life. The truth you have. The lie. All these treasures you have obtained from God, Satan is fight, running after you. Beware. In First Peter chapter five, verse eight. First Peter chapter five, verse eight. Be sober. Be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion. Walk it about seeking whom he may devour. This is an information to you. Good. 
you have gotten eternal life. You have known Jesus. Satan wants to remove that knowledge from you. You have gotten righteousness. Satan wants to replace it with sin. He wants to put a lie in your tongue. That your lips should now speak lies. Take note. He's pursuing hard. After you. What gives Satan courage is because he has gotten some. By this effort he got some. So, be very careful. He's as a roaring lion. He's threatening you. So that by trade you could give up. Seeking whom he may devour. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 12. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 10, verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take it, lest he fall. There is still a possibility of fall. There is the possibility of a fall. Have you come across somebody that say, you know, I was, I was, I was. For Ephraim was holiness unto the Lord. But what happened to him now? The enemy has devoured him. Ephraim, Israel, was holiness unto the Lord. So, you find people like that with such testimonies. Someone that the Lord used to help me in the faith. He was then as my father in the Lord. He backslid. He went to join the Muslims. He came back from there in Jehovah's Witness. And this was a deeper life man. He got me one time and said, My brother, keep the faith. As for me, I have gone. I'm telling you, the devil has gotten some like that. Effort was made. You know, it, it's as if brain, his brain is mad. My brother, as for me, I have gone. And he died. I think he died a Jehovah's Witness. So, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed. Why? Because he may fall. Don't allow a fall, but watch over your life. Yes. In the book of Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 26. Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 26. The Bible tells us here saying, did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God. And God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. Get, get that. The Lord is saying this so that you will not fall. So that you will stand forever for him. He doesn't want you to fall. God doesn't want me to fall. For it's not the will of God that any should perish. Listen to this scripture again. Nehemiah chapter 13 verse 26. Did not Solomon king of Israel sin by these things? Yet among many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God. Can you see a man so precious? He knew God. God came to him. God answered Solomon's prayer practically. God said he was beloved. But yet, what says the scripture? Even him, nevertheless, even him did outlandish women 
his case here was women brother be careful women have caused many to fall even solomon with all his wisdom even solomon with all his anointing women have caused him to fall they have caused him the bible didn't mention adam which woman caused to fall your wife can cause you to fall your wife but of course it's not mission here but of course we know it was his wife that caused him to fall so with all his righteousness therefore beware beware be careful and women men too men too husbands too we what mean to promise cause men whose eyes are full of adult, adult, I mean, idolatry adultery those ones too have caused many professing Christian women to be defiled so again in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9 and 10 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 9 and verse 10 the bible tells us here saying but they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money let's read verse 10 together are you there first timothy chapter 1 verse 6 and 10 verse chapter 1 first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 one two go for the love of money is the root of all evil which while some coveted after have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows to some it was money money love of money has, it has removed them they came to the church of god they came actually with a good heart but when they began to see careless way how money was kept in a careless way their hearts left god and went for the money and their faith died many many to Achan is bought gold and babylonish garment that took him off you come to the church your eyes are seeing money it's a loose environment very loose as we say let's collect offering you can start your own from outside and be collect everybody will believe that you are one of those collecting offering you can be collecting from there and be entering in and they'll be giving you you say okay you, you want to collect from those people outside there and fold it into your pocket and be on your way very simple like this no policemen are here no camera the love of money the love of money pierces through your faith qualitative faith beautiful faith but you could cast out demons money has, to, has polluted it you could prophesy money has polluted it you have come to position of influence the love of money has destroyed it you how are thou fallen O lucifer son of the morning how are thou cast down to the earth the distance from sky to earth is heavy it disfigured lucifer that's what we're saying love of money so be very careful because money has caused many to go off money has caused many precious faith like this yes you will eat look to god ask god to help you the work you are doing are you doing it for man although you're doing under a man are you doing it for a man servant 
serve before with your master with singleness of heart as unto the lord and not unto men knowing that of the lord you shall receive the reward of the service you are rendering if the money is not coming ask god but now you are in service for money increase my salary do this and you're taking it so tough you're not even following the holy way you're not following the godly way you're not laying you are following the worldly way how they do it striking over there you will lose your job you will lose your ministry which money cannot buy the quality of your work should be will be gone or else you begin now to take no the money they're not they're giving me here is not enough you begin to take some for yourself unauthorized your christianity is gone the love of money is the root of all evil some have coveted after it gehazi with all this your godly ministry standing before elijah and may take over a national ministry national office of a prophet after elijah is gone we will know that gehazi is the next man for there was a woman that came back to the land whom did the king call to narrate the story about the woman? It's like Gehazi. What happened? A, a, a talent of, uh, uh, of silver. Talent. Or two talents. And changes of raiment. Cleared the ministry off. That man lost the ministry eternal. The glory of the ministry was gone. Judas Iscariot. Oh, Jesus will prize great money for you. Jesus will give you great money. If you can just consent with those people, you will have great sum of money. If you can deliver your pastor, if you can deliver your leader, they have been looking for him all this while. They have been looking for him to poison him. They have been looking for him to arrest him, to disfigure him, to attack him. And you know how they can get him. They can, you can yield yourself to him and to them and say, okay, what do you want to do? They give you millions money judas judas betrayed jesus for money and where is he today hell it was better he was never created what's the problem therefore the bible is warning be careful with money be careful it has taken many away he has deceived many it has caused many to be lowered away from righteousness to associate with questionable people because of gain you are living light to darkness because you want more money to do what with it what are you going to do with money can you pay for your soul can you pay for another person's soul be careful then that's what the word of god is saying in first timothy chapter 3 verse 1 and seven. First Timothy chapter three. Verse one and verse seven. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired a good work. Verse seven. Moreover, he must have I mean verse six rather. Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Another thing that causes the fall is pride. You have come into ministry, young man. The Lord has opened a great opportunity for you. Now you can stand before crowds. Now you can say something. In fact, a gift is found in your life. Then you begin to raise shoulder. I am. I am. Oh, ye rebels. You begin to treat people of God like that. You begin to get tough, get proud. If I am not there, it cannot work. Is that so? Uh, pride go it before they fall. A healthy spirit before destruction. Where pride come in? When pride come in? Come in destruction. So here the Bible says, not a novice. People who are young ones like this. When they come to this, if you give them this great privilege, Satan will pull them down. The reason why many corruptions are found in churches is because those who went to start their ministries are young people. They're just young. 
inexperienced people and so when they went to start this thing and they they go to speak in tongues pa, 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 pa. they do it in a way people should know they're here if they prayed and god answered prayer and one person is healed wonderful the world should know a man a prophet in, before you know it, their name is prophet uh, prophet samuel yes i am a prophet so that's how they go about it and they fall because they're novice they fall they are not experienced they have not known the truth the devil gives many of these young people dreams that Jesus is the one calling them to ministry. People that have not known the word of God. People that have not been tested. Tested. They, are not, they don't know the word. They have not studied. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. How, have they studied? No. Even if you study, you go to Bible school. Yeah, I went to Bible school for one year. Which Bible school is that? Even if you go to Bible school for one year. Have you understood those things you read there? Knowledge first has to be converted to understanding. Then it is now be transferred to wisdom. It's then knowledge becomes important. Knowledge goes down to understanding. And that takes time and processes. It takes experiences for that which you know to be converted into understanding. Then it is what you have understood that you will learn how to apply. That's wisdom. Wisdom is application of understanding. Then how do you, with one year, one year, six months, you say, great minister, what have you known? And you refuse. That's where troubles are happening. Praise the Lord. So, these are the things we need to know. Having gotten these treasures from the Lord, through the medium of holiness revival movement, which the Lord emphatically claims to be his final ark. His ark. His ark. He says it himself. You say, I didn't know until the Lord brought me to holiness movement. I didn't, I, I, my life was nothing. If I had died before coming to holiness movement, I would have uh, gone to hell. How many of you are saying like that? Exactly. Exactly. So that is how life is. Now, I am happy to be, I'm one of you, rejoicing in holiness revival movement. For I never knew I could have this success in ministry. I never knew that the yearning of my heart for yes to yes would be fulfilled very simply like this. I didn't know. So we're joined together. We're rejoicing together. Not that we have condemned others. No. For God is the one that is saying it. Is that okay? God is the one that is saying it. That this is his, he has given a special grace here. He has made a special choice of this. When the Lord chose Isaac and rejected Ishmael, did you question him? No. When he chose Jacob and rejected Esau, did you question him? Did, when he chose Joseph to make him higher than his brethren, did you question him? When he chose the tribe of Judah to be the tribe that Jesus would come from, did you question him? When he chose Paul the apostle, as one born out of due time and invested great wisdom and knowledge on him. Did you question him? He said he has chosen holiness movement. He said so. He's announcing it constantly. The bell will ring again tomorrow. I said the bell will ring again tomorrow. But yeah. everybody here, I have chosen holiness revival movement. It is my final hour. It is going to achieve my purpose in this final, in this last time. The Lord will say it again. Now, we have seen his work in your life. And then, what I will say, the Lord is giving you warning over the following. Number one, be one against wolves in sheep's clothing. Be one. He's giving you warning. Wolves 
in sheep's clothing. Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 to 20. The Lord here wants solemnly beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. But in they are reverend, reverend wolves. Ye shall know them, ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruits. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth evil fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is what? Hewn down and cast into the fire. Then, let's read verse 20 together. One, two, go. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not by their weights only. Fruits. That which they produce. And some trees don't produce fruit on time. And that may delay you to know who they are. But they will come and produce. And you shall know them. Amen? Amen. They will come and produce. So the Bible said these ones, they come as sheep. They will tell you they are born again. A particular lady went to Abu Zaria. She went in the night and said she was a missionary. So she asked for the, uh, the, where the president of the uh, Christian fellowship was staying. So she, she came there in the night and said, I am a missionary. I've come over to the campus and I want to look for where to sleep. The president now started thinking, it was night. Who, which place will I direct this lady to? Which sister in the Lord will accommodate this lady? And so he was, okay, uh, let's go to the house, uh, to the room of this sister. No, we can't sleep here. Don't you believe yourself? <laughs> You shall know them by their no intelligent holy Christian. A woman that wants to maintain her virginity and righteousness coming to say you can sleep with a man, the two of you in the room because you believe yourself. And there's an alternative where you're going to sleep with another woman. No? He said no. By their fruit they shall, you shall know them. That's a higher link. That put on the sheep's clothing. It's not a child of God. She has been pulling down. She has cast down many wounded. Many mighty men have been slain by her. Her house is on the way to hell. Lying by the chambers of death. That's herself. So they come like that. Some of them are just ordinary members. They may come and tell you that we are members of Holiness Revival Movement. It's a lie. Watch them. You will know them. Give them time. Study them. You will know them by their fruits. And when you begin to see fruits and you are excusing them, you are endangering your life. The Lord has said these fruits show who the person is. Fruits. Show this person who the person is. No, 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 no. Eh? Then you are looking for trouble yourself. Ye you shall know them. They could be leaders, but you watch their lives. If some of you were watchful like that, some of these people you gave yourself to that initiated you could have not been so. Because the Lord gave you many signs about them. He gave you many signs about that minister, about that man, that leader. He gave you many signs, but you close your eyes. You close your eyes for death, because he that hardened his neck shall be destroyed without remedy. The Lord shot you. You hardened your neck. The Lord reproved you. You hardened your neck. You will receive destruction. Yes. So that's what we say. 
beware of sheep um, uh, of wolves in sheep's clothing again beware of dogs in the book of philippians so my brother sheep i mean wolves in sheep's clothing a man may come like that i may want to marry you using some title you i am prophet this and it's coming to marry you sister or is a woman i am this coming to marry you brother that's it be careful it's not everything that glitters that is gold it's not everybody that says his holiness movement that is original get your signs from the lord study your signs from the lord for many are putting on cloth that is not their own Many are claiming what they are not. Or they want to be business partners with you. Check it out. Check it out. Business partners with you. They want to spoil you. They want to provoke you into anger. They want to make you to lose your faith. So, watch out. Now, beware of dogs. Philippians chapter 2. Chapter 3, rather. Philippians chapter 3. The Bible tells us in verse 2, it says, Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. Concision. There are those that preach on circumcision. That you must be circumcised physically before you could be accepted to be a Christian. Because Christianity is the, 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 is, is, is the uh, maybe exclusive right of the Jews. And all of them are circumcised to be accepted as God's own people. So if you want also to be a child of God, you must be circumcised. Paul said be one of them. Beware of dogs. Because these people with evil doctrine, they would terrify anybody who is untruth. So that you should give up. They will back. What's the aim of dog? Backing at you. You should not make progress. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. These people are against you actually. They are not for you. In fact, some of them are sent. It's part of their job. To be among you. And scatter the thing. Like, it's time for politics now. Party A has employed sufficient politicians and send them to party B to go and join party B and be doing everything as if they belong to party B and party B may not be aware of that so party B too have sent in place some politicians and have sent them to party A they are there singing songs they are the one formulating songs there hey this man will wait oh Nigeria for this man Nigeria for this man but they are not there all is gather information for us let us hear their plan. And they will be faithfully reporting. And some of them will even be seeking gubernatorial position over there. I say, I want to be governor. I want you think it's very serious. He is spending money. They are supplying the money from A. So, so that he can supply information. So some of these ones are still from the devil. Evil workers. They are not for Jesus here. They are to supply information. They are to study who is strong, who is giving problem, which man is a man in target, which man is the Lord bringing up now, who is that sister that is looking so serious? Can we make friends with her and weaken her? Can we make friends? Can we get a wife for that other man? That man has a future. As we look at him, he's going to become a man of God, a great man indeed. But can we put a woman for him? So these things are going on. Beware of evil workers among yourselves. So that is what the Lord is saying. They're threatening you. Yes, they're persecuting you. Dogs barking, persecuting you. Beware of persecutors. Wives, beware of persecutors. Your husband can be used. That's what we tell women. You better lose that marriage than lose Christ. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? You better lose that marriage than to lose Christ. That is our position. If you, Esther said, if I perish, let me perish. Let not the word of God perish. Let not the name of the Lord perish. Let not the, the, the people of God be swallowed up by the devil. As long as I am here, my life will go for righteousness. My life will go for the glory of the Lord. My life will go for the preservation of the people of God. Did she perish? I say, did she perish? Many of you are not ready to suffer and win the victory after suffering. Jesus got his own crown after suffering. But you are not ready. You think the gospel is cheap like that. Go and tell them, I have not come for peace but for a soul. That a man can, will be an enemy with a fellow in the same house. Is the fellow not you? Are you not the fellow? Woman, stand your, strong, stand your ground. Let not the devil sponsor any man to remove your name from the book of life. Don't you know that is grace you have found? Can you find this grace cheaply? Why are you playing with it? Why do you allow a man? Do you know that man before? Did you know him before? Is, who is going to die first? Himself or you? Then why are you playing with your eternity? Wow! Be careful. So, beware. Now, beware of false speakers. Beware of false speakers. Look at it in Romans. Chapter 16, verse 17 to 19. Romans. Chapter 16, verse 17 to 19 I'm saying the choice is yours to make the decision is yours to take Romans chapter 16 verse 17 now I beseech you brethren mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and do what and do what? Does it say you should join them? For they that are such. Now let's read verse 18 together. One, two, go. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fierce speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. They have they know how to speak they say our tongue is our own that's what they're saying they, they say our tongue is our own that's what they say they know what to speak they're intelligent very intelligent he said I'm not intelligent. He, and now the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field that the Lord had made. Let Satan beguile you through his own subtlety. Wisdom. So, these people have inspiration. Wisdom. He will carry you aside and pick a leader and begin to tell you things about that leader. When he finished, you don't need a second and third confirmation. He is both second and third. You know, the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, before a matter should be established. But this kind of person, when he speaks, you don't even bother for a second witness. Not to talk of it, because his weights are two and three witnesses themselves complete fierce speeches proper lies are chosen and given to you proper lies chosen and given to you the man can tell you that this thing that he will first come and stand by a man somebody maybe stand by a leader and say a different thing 
As he was coming, he said, stand there. I'm going to see him now. What he tells me, I will tell you. I, will t I told you about it. So when he comes, he will talk another thing here. Then he goes back to meet you and say, do you know, I've told, he has talked about you again to me now. All we were saying there is about you. And actually you saw him standing near the person. They have, they have gone far. They have gone far. Using fierce speeches. Fierce speeches. Fine words. Anointed demonically. Empowered by the force of evil. And when they speak to you. They deceive the hearts of the simple. How many have been let out of this place. Because of such people. Your heart was you didn't very far. You believe that he was so right that he didn't need second witness. He didn't need third witness. You didn't value scripture anymore. You didn't respect scripture anymore because of him. Why? His words were too strong. But the Bible says, from the mouth of one witness, you shall not believe a matter. It takes what, two or three witnesses to get the matter established. You just forgot and or rather ignore the scripture for a man who has fierce speeches. Beware of them. Beware of them. Didn't God give you the spirit of discernment? Could you not discern? Beware. They will speak. This man who came up last, is it last year? Well, the, the year before the last, okay, last year. Or oh, started the other, and began to speak about holiness movement. Hey, we are from water. Hey, we are from this. He had fierce speeches. Fierce speeches. And many in the eastern side turned away from holiness movement. In fact, he came to say, if you listen to the CD of any CD of holiness movement, you'll be possessed by a demon. And he has words. After he has finished speaking, he said, yes, uh, we're standing up for deliverance. Now. Yes, yes. You feel people turning. Turn. From, where did he get the power from? You're only going by power. Which Satan can give? Which Satan can give? He said, if the words of this man were not true, will God back him up with power? It's you who don't know scripture. They shall come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, cast out devils. And in your name, do many wonderful works. I shall say unto them, depart from me, I know you not. Ye walker of iniquity. Where are you going by signs? Where are you going by miracles? Didn't the magicians in Egypt also perform miracles? Then why do you think that miracle is what justifies a liar? Do you know where he, get, he got the power from? So, beware of those ones. Again, that's what the Bible is telling us. Beware. Beware. Look at Acts of Apostles chapter 20. Verse 26 to 32. Acts chapter 20. Verse 26 to 32. The Bible tells us here, Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers. To feed the church of God, which he had purchased with his own blood. With whose blood? Is it with the blood of God that people are playing with it? That somebody can come in here and play and be speaking lies in the name of the Lord and be basically Christ's money for himself because he wants to be rich, he wants to ride cars, he wants to live in beautiful houses. Then he can use the, the money bought by the blood of God. His own blood. That's what the word is saying. Be careful. And then he continues to say. Read verse 29 and 31 to go. For I know this. 
that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them scripture prepared already before you is you who are not reading it that don't know these things are there to preserve your faith men shall arise and it's not strange for any coordinator to arise and begin to speak some things i say is the only this movement the only way you can learn the teachings of god no jesus told me yesterday he told me yes he said holy movement is my own but because it has begun to disobey me i have also turned my back to raise up another another movement is jesus who told him is jesus who told him were you there the way you believe him believing him fully you were not there but and it is where do you believe him fully what iniquity have you seen to justify that statement what have you seen in the leadership he is the one telling you the iniquities have you verified them have you verified them he's the one telling you his disappointments how we have treated him have you come to check the matter he can tell you it's between me and the international director this is what he did against me with he did like this he did like this he hindered me here he hindered me there in fact some money was to come to me he blocked it one time i was supposed to do like that he blocked it uh, he, that man that man uh, that forget have you checked up or you are allowing one person to carry you off yes you're allowing one person judge not according to appearance because you are favoring somebody because you respect somebody because you say you believe this person absolutely whatever he says is perfect judge according to righteous judgment that's the bible otherwise that man has come to you for your life that man that you are following and believing absolutely. I said, God is with him. In fact, one time I really dreamed, I dreamed, bro, that I saw Jesus standing by, by you. That demonic Jesus that you saw, to, that comes to justify wickedness, that comes to justify the evil man, has come because you opened the door for him. And it's for your harm be slow brother the angels in heaven didn't learn this lesson early they wouldn't have become demons on earth they wouldn't have become these ones moving with tails and horns upon their heads it's because they didn't check this thing what satan told them about the living god who is perfect holy they never cared to verify they were carried away with the beauty of satan who made satan beautiful why are you carried away? You are carried away by somebody who is in this movement? Who taught him the world? Who taught him the world that makes him intelligent? That now, by his intelligence, is carrying you away with words that you have not very far. Beware. Beware of fear speakers. That's what the world is saying. Again, beware of deceitful workers in the book of second corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 to 15 second corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 the bible says for such are false apostles deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ and no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light 
Now let's read verse 15 together. One, two, go. Therefore, it is not great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Absolutely. They jump up and down. We are evangelists. We are prophets. We are in fact, some will tell you we are sponsors. That's why even getting sponsors, money from people, we are very careful who gives it. I'm telling you the truth. It's not everybody, hey, bring, bring. Never. We are very careful. God, do you say he should give? God, is it in your will? Because many of these are sponsored by the devil. Many of these they are distributing free materials. You are going to take. Be very careful, brother. The poor people suffer a lot. These poor people who stand on the way and say, give me lift. Many of them, you won't hear of them, of them again. Because they have carried them to a known destination. In the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, uh, with the mind, I'm helping you. They, are, they enter the car and they slip away. Poverty is a problem. You are poor, let God guide you. Don't say you are poor and you are going to every man. They will give you what is more, more than poverty. What is worse than poverty. Your very soul shall go to hell. Lazarus was poor. But he went to heaven. Despite that dogs licked his wounds. So, be careful, man of God, where you collect money. Some are demonic money already marked. And once you collect them out of this, your love of money, the power of evil begins to work because you're in partnership. You're doing that work in partnership. I'm telling you, Therefore, be careful. Minister. Oh, we are evangelists. They are moving from place to place. That's why in the Bible days, they give you letters. If you are going from one place to another, you are given a letter to show that we know him. He is approved of us. And the person signing the letter must be one with authority. That is what they do. Else, they go. Bye-bye. They are going to do many wicked things. Many. They go to, somebody comes, you just begin to enter into his ministry to lay hand upon you. Lay hands suddenly on no man. And don't suddenly receive any man's hands upon your head. Do you know him? You know where he is from? You are more careful, you are more interested for miracle than eternal life. More interested for miracles than eternal life. These days that everybody is a prophet. The Lord told me. The Lord told me. They are using that to sell markets. Not everybody who tells you the Lord told you is righteous. Not. Please switch your heart to righteousness. Switch it. Let the prophet prophesy by two, at most by, uh, by three, and let the other judge. Allow prophecy. When one come, wait to see whether others will confirm. Wait. Let the prophet, the prophecy be judged. Judged by scripture. Let's see. Because God has spoken once. Yeah. Twice he has spoken. Has God used other methods for that message? Because he, won't, he will not only use one message. Other methods will come. Because he's the God that said from the mouth of two or three witnesses. So, if that prophecy is of God, others will follow. If that dream is of God, others will follow. And when these others are following, you see, check up whether they are prophets or bear. Because 400 of them can, will speak the same thing. They have one spirit. Amen. Amen. That you don't just carry things and begin and your Christian life is destroyed. 
So, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves to be ministers of Christ. Yea, no wonder, for even Satan, their father, transforms himself to be an angel of light. It is no great thing if his ministers, therefore, are transformed as ministers of righteousness. Demon, Satan appeared to a particular man in one country. The man had fasted for how many years, how many months, right? days. He was going for one month's fasting. He said he either fasting for, for 18 days or so, and in the course of the fasting, in the afternoon, he saw an image appear. Bruh! It was to him. Jesus had appeared to him. Jesus. Yes, now, because I was fasting. Listen, this fasting that you carry anyhow, be very careful, especially you people who go to mountain. Do you know that demons sit in the mountain? They told you that you must go to mountain. You're transgressing the scripture. And the soul that breaketh an age, the serpent shall bite him. You are not aware of these things. Mountain. I'm going to mountain. And you're really going to look for a physical mountain. Hey, these people. The Bible says, I would that mean pray everywhere. Lifting up holy hands before God. But your own is mounted. It's demonic. Every kind of people, Sele goes to mountain. Cherubim and Seraphim goes to mountain. You also, you go to mountain. Mountain will jump themselves. Spirits are there. He said, like the Lord spoke to me. I saw a vision on the mountain. And you're corrupting the church of God. Corrupting the doctrines of righteousness by visions of mountains. Fasting anyhow. Not fasting that is inspired by God. Fasting for strife and debate. So you see this type of thing. And you begin to incur some spirit. So this demon appeared before but with light. He thought he was Jesus. Oh my Lord. He was to bow down and worship. A voice came from heaven. Ask him. Are you the son of God? Uh uh. But the voice was clear. So he said, Are you the son of God? That word made Satan to transform. Transform. And became Satan. Looking at him with great anger. Because you, you have come to this territory to disturb me. Satan wants first to win his friendship and become his Lord. That's the first approach. This is that Jesus you are fasting to. Oh my son. Because he came, oh my he came my son. Jesus, that, this is that Jesus. Okay. And we'll now begin to be, give him some subtle message. Subtle assignment. He will say, I've got my Jesus. Then Satan will be appearing with him to him continually and lead him off. He wanted to use friendship. Peace, peace on a white horse. But when he was discovered, ah, I'm Satan now. Then the power came, rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Said, Jesus, no matter rebuke you, he disappeared. That demon that appeared in the name of Jesus to you and be saying that he is Jesus, may he disappear out of your life. <laughs> Making you to prophesy falsely. Making you to be false vision. Making you to be led away from righteousness by subtle voice. You're following the voice of your mind. It's not your mind you're following. But the Spirit says, the Spirit told me, God told me. Who is that God? Why is it contrary to Scripture? Why is it not providing the fruit of righteousness? Where there lies inside you? So that's what we're saying. Beware. And finally, now, end up where we read before. In Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Chapter 30. I read from verse 11. For this commandment. Which I commanded this day. Is not hidden from you. Neither is it far off. It is not in heaven. That thou should say. Who shall. 
go up for us to heaven and bring it unto you that we may um, and bring it that unto us that we may hear it and do it neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it but the word is very near unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have said before thee, this day life and good, and death and evil. My brethren, we have, everything is made clear. The doctrines are clear. The teachings are clear. We have also demonstrated the Christian life to you. The one that was not living the life, we got him off. Because he can't walk among us. Paul said, Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily, justly, and unblameably we have behaved among you. Can Paul have a false man with him? Then that scripture has lost its authenticity. Because it's a we, not only I, Paul. I and my workers must be blameless. So, we've, de we've, we've demonstrated the life of righteousness before you by the grace of God. We're not liars. We don't commit immorality. We don't cheat. We don't hate people in our hearts. No. We don't hate people in our We don't do evil. The testimony of our conscience before God. The testimony of our conscience before God. And we have appeared before you. To your judgment that you see it yourself. Then we have taught you doctrine so nice, so clean, so clear. We have answered your questions. We have made Jesus clear. Practical testimonies of heaven and hell are made known unto you. Everything is clear. Then we are saying, see, verse 15, I have said before thee this day, life and good, and death and evil. In that I command thee this day, to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments, and his statutes, and his judgments, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. I am pleading with you. Stay with the Lord. Stay with the teachings of righteousness. Follow along. Let's go with us. For God has promised great things about us. And they are unfolding to our wonder. He's telling us great things are still in store. Please, let's go together. Don't allow any man to deceive you. Don't allow any man to take you off. Be he even one of us that deviate, that deviates and is saying, come along with me. Don't hear that. Those who are in the company of Judas perished. Judas, yeah, it was with Jesus. He had a position of treasurer. Position of treasurer with Jesus. But you don't follow him. Don't follow him. Let's follow the same way. This way of righteousness. This way of truth. No lie inside. This way of faithfulness. Standing strong to the doctrine. Not only with lips but with life. Let's follow this way. So that's what I am saying. That you should love the Lord God. And keep his commandments. And his judgments. All these teachings about jewelry. Please stand on, on it. Turn off from them. From them. Stand firm. These teachings. Don't corrupt yourself. Women, keep standard. Be natural. Be natural. Don't put lie over your life. Over your face. Over your skin. Over your ears. Over your head. Over, if, over your body. Perform smelling a different strange smell in your life. That's strange. Every creature, living creature, has unique scent. God gave it. Why is your own different? Why is your own different? When you pass, it's as if flies are following you. That's a lie. 
you call it sweet smell it shall end up with a stinking smell in hell so please let's follow this truth follow this way that's our persuasion our plea but if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear but shall be drawn away by another man with fierce pitches and be drawn away by any other maybe money by be drawn away by whatsoever and, but you be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them i denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land whether thou passest over jordan to go to possess it you know there is something the people making drugs said if it is not panado it is what eh? that if it is not panado it is not the same thing with panado come brethren do you know something it's not that other places are not good are you hearing me some places are still good by the grace of god but the thing is divine choice the matter is divine choice where god feels to put his headquarters are you hearing me it's not every place that is the headquarters of a nation or, or headquarters of an establishment or the capital of a nation a place is chosen for the capital where the president has his own seat i think that's what god has done with holiness movement he chose this place and therefore because it is capital it must be developed more money must be spent on it to make it befit the, the president of the nation that's how the matter is that god has chosen this place he is given grace here it becomes easier for people to make heaven he is jealous over this place with, with great jealousy that's why you see him is looking like that anyone that wants to spoil this place he will spoil him i'm telling you therefore if you come to be boasting god brought you here and you say you will bust bust and go we don't have any problem about that you can bust and go your boasting is to the lord who brought you here you are revolting against him is that not so the matter is between you and god two of you will settle it but we were still here i said we we are still here you can be offended but the offense can be solved three times in a mysterious way my teeth beat my tongue I, the first time i cried out i said what is it i thought it was okay hit it again the second time I said, ah what he hit it the third time i said Koi, what's happening here but the teeth and the tongue are still in my mouth <laughs> are you hearing me in case little thing you're offended little thing you're offended i'm going my way that's a, a, a spirit of error we can settle the thing and continue in jesus name even our brother that is dropped if he makes up his way he can come back we we'll say oh god has forgiven you you have done your restitutions and we have received we're seeing the fruit let's go continue that's how life is so that is what he said therefore that's what the lord says but if you say you don't want when the lord has shown you mercy you reject mercy they that observe lying wonders forsake their mercy you are observing lying wonders outside and you're going out you are forsaking your mercy this is mercy the lord showed you but they're deceiving your heart prodigal son you're hearing lying wonders in the far country you are living you are forsaking your mercy so he said i call heaven and earth to record this day against you 
that I have said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Not only you, your seed. Not only you, your children, biological. Not only that, your children that you will win in the faith. You win them, they are not standing. You win because they don't have the right place to nurse them up. Where they go, they don't have the real teaching. Now you see, you turn like that, you see that person you brought, it's still going on. You see that other person you brought, it's still going on. See how your fruits are living. And they are your joy when Jesus shall appear. For them to live. Make a good choice. The choice is yours. It's not by force. To stay or to go is yours. The decision is yours to take. The choice is yours to make. Yes. That thou mayest love the Lord thy God. And that thou mayest observe, obey his voice. And that thou mayest cleave unto him. For he is thy life and the length of thy days that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. So, for eternal life, we are already close to it. We are getting close. The joy is that the testimony of our conscience. We're having peace in our hearts. The enemy wants to threaten us. We look at where is your threat coming from? No, God has sanctified me. I'm ready for heaven. We are ready for heaven. Amen. For the things of heaven, we are doing them. The commandments of heaven, we are keeping them. The life of heaven, we are living it. So, keep going. Stay with God. He has invited you to this place. Holiness Revival Movement. Let's work together to keep it clean. I congratulate you. Who so evil and reported it. That this church should not be. This is a church of course. Is this a church? It's a body of Christ. That's the church. The universal church. When the church becomes denomination. This is the universal church. Of all nations, of all race, from every class, every place, meet together in one name, Jesus. So it is a church, although not a denominational church. Is that clear? Let's work to keep righteousness here. Let's agree on one thing. Let's stand on one thing. Believe one thing. We have frowned at this coordinator whom Satan entered into to corrupt this movement. Let us have the same uniform frowning. Are you hearing me? Let us do the same. If you say your own is pity, you will be sinning against God because you are blocking divine work on that person. You are blocking divine work. Whoever we discipline, all of us discipline. Is that clear? That's what Paul said. The person that I discipline, all of us join together to do it. For I do it for all of us. For our interests all and for the interests of that person. And when such a person is received back, we should also all receive that person back. Is that okay? That is if repentance, genuine repentance follows. Because the man that was received back showed clear evidence of repentance. His life changed. Paul said, now can you see his life? How carefulness, how remorse, how this. Now please, you can receive him back now. He has, you can see how he's cleared now. You can see his attitude now. You can see the zeal of the Lord now. You can see the confession he has made now. You can see receive him back and whomsoever i receive back all of you receive him back may god give us the spirit of the early church Amen. as we prepare for his coming to win the world to his righteousness 
by truth, by judgment. For the word of God is too edged so. Let's rise up upon our feet and give thanks to the Almighty. Worship him and say, God, this is your world. And all of us stand on it. Jesus name we pray may the power of God come upon our lives the God of holiness may he rule over our lives he said I have said blessing over your life I have said life before you may the blessings of God Come upon your life. According to his divine promise. This eternal life. May you possess it. I say you will possess it. It's done. I say it is done. The Lord that brought you here will sustain you. In the name of Jesus. Any ignorance that is in you that anybody wants to use to cheat you to pull you out of the truth out of the way of righteousness me the light of God the understanding of God roll away that ignorance in Jesus name any poverty that is in your life that anyone wants to use to deceit, deceive you with, with destructive money. Oh God most high. Answer your children. Answer your children. Let prosperity come upon you in Jesus name. Oh Jesus hear our prayers. Any miracle you are looking for. That is the reason why these false ones are putting hands upon you. Transferring some spirits into your life. God must have. Oh Lord the King that is hearing his prayer. I am asking do the miracle for them in Jesus name. Any fear bondage in your life. I pray it will be broken in your life. Amen. It will be broken in your life. Amen. 
oh God Moshar, anyone here that is under fantasy, anyone hypnotized by the devil, initiated by any person that has deceived him, deceived her, God Moshar, let your angels go and fight for the release of that soul. Yeah. I command you, get released yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Total liberty is on your, on your life. May the Lord pour liberty upon you. May the Lord break your yokes. May the Lord break your yokes. In the name of Jesus. Any disease of the devil. Any yoke of Satan. Inside your body. In your stomach. In your womb. In your bladder. In your kidney. In your lungs. Anywhere it is. In your reproductive system. In your bloodstream, in your boom, I command them, let them be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be free, be free, serve Jesus. I am praying that the rain of God will fall upon you, the rain of righteousness will fall upon you. The rain of holiness will fall upon you. The rain of prosperity will fall upon you. The rain of power and anointing will fall upon you. You will be useful. You will never backslide. You will never stop your journey on the way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production, and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiry, contact us on 0813-635-6813 and 0805-683-4318. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe
I believe 